So Coach, tell us about these two players. Um, Hard-working kids, you know, love them. Um, going to be depending on these two guys to, uh, to lead us to wherever our success is going to be this year. Um, it's going to be, you know, pretty much the team's going to be on their back. What positions we got here? Uh, running back, linebacker for Karsten, and wide receiver, cornerback for Mike. Return to Alpha. How many, how many players you got this year? Because numbers is always a game in this. Uh, I don't know. Um, hopefully we'll be in the 30s this year. Um, I don't know. We, we, we had 24 last year. Um, went second round playoff, nine and two. Um, so uh, my whole objective is to just create that blue collar mindset in these young men. Because again, uh, as you said, mentioned, we don't have a lot of numbers, uh, but we're going to work hard and we're going to go out and we'll compete every Friday night. So New, new division last year for you, uh, for a lot of new faces, a lot of new teams. How, how did you have to adjust much at all on that? Or? Yes, um, because you know, you go into a situation where you didn't know any of your opponents. You didn't know um, anything about them. Uh, they didn't know anything about you as well, but um, it was an adjustment period for us. And, um, we got in a rhythm, I guess, maybe the, the fourth, maybe the fifth ball game of the season. We kind of got in a little rhythm. It was etchy in the beginning because, again, you know, you had various offense, various defense that we really hadn't been accustomed to in the last couple of years. And so it was an adjustment period for But, you know, we got in a rhythm last year. Will you guys have nine games again this year? Yes, we will. Okay. We will. Same schedule? Yes, yeah, same just, schedule. Just flip. Just flip, yes. All right, for the players, Winning season. It's been a while since Midfield has had that. You, you, you did good last year. Heading into the playoffs, you get that first round win. You get your second round loss. You lose it by four points. Lessons learned from that game. What have y'all done in the offseason to prepare? We'll start with you. Um, conditioning more because I feel that we, we ran out of gas the last game in the playoffs. Uh, same thing. Just we just conditioned more, worked harder. You know, just continue just to go to practice and try to get better and make your teammates better. Oh. So okay, so we've been asking all teams all day long. Um, social media has played a big aspect in the game this day and age. Come to you, coach, in a second. But what do you guys do personally during the week, game day? on social media to prepare, or if any, to prepare for the game on Friday night? I tend to, to meet to myself, make sure that I'm, I'm good and ready to go before the game. I listen to music, uh, check out my old highlights, see what I did there, any things that I can fix, you know, just that recognizable on the field and just try to be better than the last game. Well, you know, again, uh, we're, in the, we're in this area of, era of social media. Um, and so, I understand it. I'm a dinosaur to it. I be honest with you, I'm a dinosaur to it. Uh, and if it wasn't for my my players um, keeping me abreast as to what's going on, then I wouldn't be. Uh, we were just talking about Twitter just a moment ago outside. But uh, I try to go to uh, I try to go to social media just to pull up our kids up because I do know that that's how all the kids are connected nowadays. Um, college coaches are connected with with the social media aspect. And so I try to just pull up our kids up, uh, let the community know that we have a ball game where it's going to be and, and, and just some highlights from the previous ball game. So that's how I typically go to the social media. Other than that, I'm, I'm really not on it. For the players, so you, you guys are using Huddle now to so you, you use to scout other teams yes, sir. that you're going up against next week, find their weaknesses and maybe watch your highlights to Coach, how does that change the game for you? Well, you know, again, dinosaur. I was in the age of you had to take the old VHS and you had to meet a coach somewhere. Uh, and then we evolved to, to the CDs. <laughs> and so now uh, with, the, with the hub, that's, that's, that's great. Um, like I said, the game has changed so much. Um, and as long as the NFL and the college football game is changing, uh, you're going to see those changes trickle down to the high school level as well. Because, you know, um, those guys on that high school level has aspiration of going to the next level. And so uh, you have to kind of keep 
you know, keep abreast as to what's going on. But Huddle has changed the game tremendously for us uh, as far as uh, self-scouting, uh, scouting other opponents, highlights because the kids, again, they're into highlights. And so uh, being able to reach out to coaches, uh, that's, it's, been a, it's been a very great asset to, to, to football. Coach, uh, I was going to ask him one more question. Go for it. Dark, give us some dark horses on your team that we may have not seen in midfield pass that might be game changers coming in the senior year. Um, it's hot outside, and, you know, it's some days I'm, it's tough for me as a coach. I don't have any equipment. Uh, and so we, we, do, we, do, we do conditioning. Um, throughout the course of the summer, throughout the course of the of the game week, um, but it's mental. It's a mental situation, and uh, it's a wheel. It's a wheel, uh, and, and those guys have to be prepared for it. Because face it, let's face it, every team has the same under the same conditions, um, other than the number for for the most part. Uh, I think we went last year and played. Second round of playoffs. I don't think necessarily it was more of a conditioning factor. I just, I just think it was a the fatigue had set in from the season. You know, you play, you playing twenty four kids, and here it is in the second round of playoffs, and those kids are just it was just kind of pooped out. You know, when you get in the second round, guys and the teams that in the second round, they're supposed to be there, and so uh, it was a shootout, but. Uh, for the most part, I just think I got they, they was up for the challenge last year, and I'm expecting to be up for the challenge again this year. Carson, you've done this before, playing both ways, and I mean, I don't even know if you ran off the field last year at all. But how, how do you prepare yourself for that? And like Coach said, the that, the mental preparation for understanding what you get yourself into. I just know that I have to. I'm, I have to step up. You know, I have to be that that firecracker that set off my team. You know, and just set us to move forward and just work as hard as we can and just go out there and give it all off because I do extra conditioning. You know, you can do conditioning at practice, but you got to do self-conditioning. I make sure I do that and just hope we have a great season. Coach, um, you've been there a long time, and uh, sometimes there come, becomes complacency in the community and the fans, alumni. Um, what efforts have you made in the last years or making this year to maybe reach out to the community a little bit more and bring midfield community and alumni back to midfield Patriots football? Well, I'm glad to say that. We're in the process now of um, rebuilding and rebranding uh, midfield. Um, we started a program um, last couple of weeks. I met with some of the former players. Uh, at midfield, we're going to we're going to go back and we're going to launch Patriot Nation, which will um, which will highlight again some of the former players who will come back and be mentors um, to the current players. And it's going to be one of those things that we're just going to continue to recycle. So once these guys graduate, they're going to be back into Patriot Nation. They come back and they lift uplift those younger guys uh, and just get back out into the community and do community service work. Um, just you know, whatever it takes to 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 get these young men to understand the value and, and the concept of work and reaching back and, and uplifting, and that's what we're into doing. To be a patriot, um, kind of history making last year. Pensacola game is for the players. Set a school record, seventy points in a game. How'd y'all feel about that? I mean, I'm sure y'all explain to us the feeling of setting a school record. Being a part of that team, it was definitely mind blowing, and just it just made me want to be more better for the next game. It just it was great. It was a great confidence boost to show us that that we were, what we are capable of doing against the other team. Carson, you played on both sides of the ball. Which one do you like better? I just like football, but <laughs> <laughs> I just I just like to play the game of football. And I just do what coach coach want me to play it. So. But I love both of the positions. How do you, or do you, try to rest him some because he's been so productive on both sides? Um, and that's the thing. So I, I tell my coaches this, and I also get into my players' ears. We have 24 guys. I need 24 guys to play. Why? Because there's going to be some spills when Carson needs to come out of the game. And I need you to go in there for a play or two. 
And so I give him those. I give him those opportunities. I give him two, maybe two or three plays. Uh, if I can give him a series, uh, but it just depends on those guys who's behind him. And uh, Mike Jones last year was one of those guys who can come in and give us some plays last year, both on offense, defense, and the return game. And it was big. And so this year we're expecting the Mike to carry a load. He won't come off the field this year. Uh, Mike will not come off the field along with Carson. And, and so we had to groom and, and, and prep younger guys and, and to to be prepared to go in and give us some and give us some play. Coach, uh, you got to ask about the helmet, the minor helmet with the Patriots logo on it. Tell us, tell us about that. Just, again, blue collar. Blue collar, work ethic. You got to come to work every day. 24 guys who can't complain, can't cry, who can't, who can't complain, who can't mope. Walk around and saying, that I wish we had this many guys. Hey, we got 24 guys. If we have 30, we got 30 guys, whatever the number is. But if we have 16 guys, listen, we got to put that hard hat on and we got to go to work because we have a game on Friday night. Does that go to the mentality of the, the shirt, the don't quit attitude? That's it. That's it. It, all, it all ties in. And we say don't quit, but it's really do it, don't quit, you know. And so uh, just do whatever it takes to do. And how long, however long it takes us to get it done, we're going, we're going to be there. So we have to go into uh, X number of overtime games to get it done, and we'll do that. And we've been in those situations before. I think we was in that situation against Mono Battle uh, a couple of years ago to go into the – to get it catapulted into the playoff game, you know. And so um, we was in a shootout last year against West Mr. Chris. You know, they score, we score. They score, we score. So it was one of those things to put the hard hat on and uh, don't quit. Just continue to grab. Last year, you guys got us kind of upgraded in the stadium with new bleachers. Is there any, any new aesthetics to the stadium this year that you got? No, no we just – nothing new. Just midfield football. Just midfield football. Did Did you guys play any uh, any games with replay last year? We did not. Well, you guys have it at your stadium this year? No, no. We, we – no, we – What do you think of it? Uh, I think it's I think it's an excellent tool. Um, we're a small school. Um, really don't have the resources um, to 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 tackle that that feat as of yet. Uh, but I think it's a I think it's a great tool. Um, I think you know I don't ever complain about the fish. I don't allow my kids to complain about a fish aid. Uh, I don't allow my coach to complain about a fish aid. I think it's a great tool. You know, we had some calls last year that could have gone either way, 50-50. And, uh, and with the replay, uh, it, it probably could have made a difference. We we saw several ball games. Even in, in the playoff game against West, Mr. Christian, um, it was a turn. I mean, Carson gets down to the one-yard line, uh, and the whistle blows, the play stops. The kid just takes the ball from Carson, and they continue to allow the play to run and it just was a momentum change. Well, with instant replay, we would have, you know, that, that play would have been dead and we would have still had the ball again to go in and score. As a turn, it flipped. They get the ball and they go down and they score, and there was just a swing in, in the momentum. Uh, and so instant replay would definitely have uh, been a good thing for us on last year, but, hey, it is what it is. Are you hoping that you guys will be able to add it in the future? Of course. And it, and it is uh, that we can get – and they're not necessarily been an edge, this is a level playing field, you know. So if if I'm out there playing and you have instant replay, and I have instant replay, it's a level ball game, even ball game. But if you have it, and I don't have it. You have you have one up on me, and so uh, and vice versa. So um, I'm just looking for I'm just looking for um, an opportunity to continue to build a program, continue to grow, and uh, bring new resources to our program. Tell us about. I have to ask before you go kicking game. Who's going to be doing the duties for you this year? Yes, uh, we have a kid out uh, this year. Uh, we're we're going. We're excited about him. Uh, we're going to see exactly where he's going to be. He's been kicking the ball pretty good in, in practice for us. Um, Cause that wasn't an option much for midfield. Last past. year, last year hurt us. Um, that was one of the things that hurt us again in, in the second round of playoff. We can kick field goals. Uh, we 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 possibly come out of that ball game with a win. Um, but we fell short on a couple two-point conversions last year. They come down, they kick the field goal, and eventually the tide just, just – there was a uh, change in the tide. But uh, we, we're, we're excited about the young kid that we have. He's a transfer in. Um, 
And so he, he came in, uh, moved into the zone. And so we're, we're excited about seeing what he can do on the pressure. For the players, I see y'all nodding on that. Uh, how's it feel to maybe have the opportunity to not score a score touchdown and then not have to know, oh, we've got to go back and get another two point that you can, you can rely on a, a kicker. Does that make y'all feel more confident out there? Definitely, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Coach, who's, who's doing kickoff return for you this year? Uh, I don't know. Um, we'll see. Carson. Carson did those duties on last year. Um, Anthony did the duties a little last year, but again, um, we're going to be heavily depending on Carson uh, in, the, in, in the regular offense. Of course, Anthony will be um, heavily dependent on that quarterback this year. So there may be another uh, opportunity for Mike to, to, to be inserted. Now, he did some punt return for us last year, and so this year he, he may be that guy who went on the uh, kickoff return as Might well. Might be the only chance you get have to give him a rest. Yeah, you may, and then, you know, it just depends. You know, we have to get that ball in his hand as much as we possibly can, as, as along with Mike. And so, we're just excited about these young men, man.